Long ago, there was a time when you couldn't even take the trash out in a movie without someone trying to take you out. Garbage day! Huh? No! Ah! <laughs> that time was the 1980s, when the action film genre exploded with multiple iconic movies, many of which started film series that we're still watching to this very day. Machine guns, crawl spaces, flamethrowers, and that ritual that allows the mortal to become more montages. These were the things that made action movies of the 1980s so memorable, and the best of them were almost all stamped with a certain label, Made in the USA. It was like that for a while, until 1987, when a Japanese movie with all of those things and more strapped to its back appeared. A movie that was confident, stylish, and ready to show you Famicom shopping sprees, anti-rape attack cats, and flamethrower battles in construction yards. The only place you're going to see things like this is in Shinjuku Love Story. And the only place you're going to see that movie reviewed is here on Crazy Ega. There's this Japanese schoolgirl who's participating in the national pastime of ditching class to go hang out on Shinjuku with her cat, Chaco. After blowing all of her yen on Nintendo games, Mari loses Chaco, who runs off and somehow knocks out a street hoodlum. This hoodlum is Ichioji, a brash young man who finds that minding things with his fist and feet is more satisfying than with his P's and Q's. Of course, Mari does the responsible, polite thing when she meets a violent person and takes him out to lunch. It's there that she realizes, oh no, I've spent all my money on Nintendo games, and also realizes that Ichioji is kind of an idiot who doesn't have money himself. So, how are they going to pay for lunch? Well, Ichioji has a bright idea. He's going to go in the back and talk it over with the restaurant owners and the chefs. Well, he talks it over by beating the crap out of them. He gives them their first Michelin stars, in other words. This begins Mary and Ichioji's sudden date, which turns into sudden disaster after sudden disaster, as Ichioji basically pisses off every lowlife in Tokyo. The Yakuza, corrupt cops, and Italian chefs all want these two kids dead, or alive, or in between. Wild, right? This is Shinjuku love story, and this is probably why the birth rate is so low in Japan. I mean, if this is how their first dates are, I can see why. If you like films such as Into the Night, Something Wild, Midnight Run, those movies that have people fleeing the bad of the past in hopes of arriving at a better tomorrow, movies that are always moving from scene to scene and never slowing down in one place for too long, that's the race that Shinjuku love story is running. It is energetic, is dynamic, and it's always trying something new on its way to an entertaining finish line. This race is never too serious in tone as well. As soon as you see a grown man knocked out by a cat, you get the sense that this is like an anime or a manga acted out with real people instead of drawings made by starving Japanese people. And I'm sorry, I said anime? That's like the stuck up way people say anime. So I really meant to say anime. I'm sorry. This sense of fun in the movie is balanced though. It never gets too zany. It only lends to a certain fun feeling that is paramount in making the film work as well as it does. It's more pop and less corn, if that makes sense. Sometimes the plot is a little hard to follow, though, and that's understandable given its pacing, which is breakneck. Especially the parts of the Yakuza, I really had trouble understanding those. I can't really make sense of the ending either, but before I can dwell on things like this, two men hijacking a swan boat for too long, I remember that the movie features someone frisbee smashing a plate onto a cop's head. Oh, so good. And all is right again. So if the movie is going to focus on people running into different places, those places probably need to be interesting. Well, Shinjuku definitely accomplishes this mission, as it rushes by plenty of street-level Shinjuku locations, which are kind of charming in their 1980s Tokyo Pop style. But it also goes deep underground, under Tokyo, literally, into this weird Murakami-ish underground hydroponic lab, a car rotisserie. It's a spinning thing that cars park on. I think it's a car rotisserie. They're not cooking them. Maybe they're just parking them. Who knows? There's an industrial air conditioner shaft and even an abandoned hospital. Even better, you know what? Many of these locations are actually waiting beneath the real Tokyo. What, you thought Akira made all that stuff up? No, Tokyo is weird above and below. As a viewer, by the time our characters end up in an air vent, straight out of Aliens, it, it's Aliens, folks, brutally brawling like they're auditioning for They Live, or crashing minecarts into sewer pits, you just can't deny that Shinjuku as a movie is doing things that the admittedly smaller Japanese film market never did before, and still doesn't really do. Shinjuku Love Story could really be titled Shinjuku Love Letter. It's a love letter sent to the American action film. 
While it borrows from Hollywood, it doesn't rip anything off. Further, it polishes what it takes, delivering an absolutely entertaining experience of return. Given the rarity for a movie like this to capture the look and feel of a foreign market, the accuracy it had in doing this and the satisfaction of the achievement made here, given all of these things, I really have to deem Shinjuku Love Story the definitive Japanese 80s action movie. That's the feeling I got from it. I said, wow, they took that all-encompassing idea of the action movie that they probably love to watch, and they did it themselves. It's, it's really impressive. Given that, I give Shinjuku Love Story four Mall Ninja Pistols out of five. I can't tell you of really any other Japanese movie that does nearly all of this stuff in one place. But I can tell you that you might just love this movie for doing it.